Comfy studio where we get comfy. the the fun chairs and the and the the tables and might as well just get some stuff. recliners up in here while we're at it. We I got really a, got the TV everything. Really, this, you know, this, this is, should be more like cinema therapy at this point. <laughs> you know, I like that idea. Um, so, cinema two thousand. It's Monday. <laughs> cinema four thousand. Yeah, we're gonna really put this. Yeah, there you go. Just silhouettes. <laughs> silhouettes. And we're going to play videos of technology stuff from the week, and we're just going to comment on it and <laughs> throw zingers at the screen. Um, happy great. Monday, everybody. Happy Monday. It is yeah. still Monday, right? I believe so. Okay, good, because it's really Monday morning, so it's already been a long day. Yeah. Um, how did you tech this weekend? Wow. I, I, you know, I'm trying to figure out what I did this weekend. Um, yeah, it's tough to remember back that far, isn't it? It, it is. I mean, there's <laughs> so much going on. I didn't really tech. I used some remote access tools this weekend, but that's Ooh. about, that's about it. You know, ah, uh, most, most of my stuff was, uh, you know, just putzing around the house and getting things done. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I had a birthday this weekend. All right. And um, I, I, I try to only do it once a year, okay? <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I got was, um, and, and for home tech, okay, this is important stuff. Uh, I did a lot of research on battery-operated power tools. And it was really interesting because one of the things that we came up with is that Bosch is like the Tesla of home power tools. Their battery technology is just way above mm. anybody else on the market. And so we're looking at it, and I'm going through it, and I'm like, okay, it's got like a one-year warranty on it. I'm like, okay, that, that's typical, you mm -hmm. know, for everything. Um, but when you think about it, what do you have to go through in order to get your warranty device warranty? Right. you got to mail it in. <laughs> okay, that's typical. And so... I have a power tool that relies on this battery, okay, because really it's the batteries is mostly what you're going to lose. I have a power tool that relies on this battery. What am I going to do with it? i got to mail it in. So what am I supposed to do in the meantime? i got to go buy another battery. Oh, and then I'll get my battery back in three to six months is their typical turnaround time. Once they take it apart, analyze it, and decide whether or not it's a covered warranty item or not, or if you threw it in the lake, okay, and you're mad about it. So it's like, wow, what a pain in the but, but that's normal for these batteries, right. which is why nobody bothers using their warranty on them. Mm -hmm. So then I remember something I heard, and uh, I went and double-checked it. When I bought my new electric weed eater, I bought a Cobalt. Now, Cobalt is the store brand for Lowe's. And usually you think store brand, you think matzo matzo, you know. Um, but... When I started doing my research, I'm like, but, 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 but when I bought it, they said, yeah, and if you have a problem with it, you can just bring it back and we'll exchange it. Compare that to three to six months and I got to buy a new one in the meantime. Right. Okay. I mean, Lowe's is, you know, nine minutes from my house. Mm -hmm. I can just drive in, hand it to them and take a new one. Okay. That has major benefits to it. But is that like a 90 day warranty? Right. You right. know, what's the warranty coverage on it? Yeah. <laughs> three years. Wow. Three times the warranty, and I could just drive in, hand it to them, and walk out with a new one. And the tool has a five-year warranty. So if there's a problem with the screwdriver or the saw or whatever, five years, bring it back, walk out with a new one. Interesting, huh? Yeah. So believe me, I'm like, okay, Porter Cable, we've had a great relationship. Poop, out the door you go. Uh, because both my Porter Cable chargers died within three weeks of each other. And you can't buy a Porter Cable charger by itself. Yeah, I think you can only get off-market brand. And that's where these uh, um, OEM, you know, or 
companies, yeah. you know, they basically have them built by third parties, but, you know, that's that warranty process is what locks the customers in place, yeah. you know, and that, that makes them keep coming back. And um, I, look, if you're going to give me a three-year warranty where all I have to do is, you know, walk in and you hand me a new one, that that's how Apple used to be. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if you had a problem with your phone, you just walk in, okay, here's a new one, bye. Yeah. Um, so they're basically running the Apple model. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing, though. I'm like, okay, so how good is the tool, right? So for my birthday, I get a... Um, now, now, with the Porter cable, I had like a four and a half, four and three quarter inch circular saw. Mm -hmm. So it's got a tiny blade, and I had to make sure it had tiny teeth because it would go... Nyeh. It was... Yeah. I mean, <laughs> now, now it, it, it was a 20 amp battery. How, how old was that? What, was that an 18 volt system? or 20. 20? Okay. 20 volt system. Um, but it was like, if I try to go through anything, you know, one inch boards were okay, start to get up to two by fours or anything, and it's like, I'm not in the mood, you know? So it's like, go haul out the cord, do the real thing, you know? Uh, it was great for quick something or other with a one inch board or anything like plywood or any, not plywood really, but, you know, any kind of door skin or anything thin I needed to work with. It was super duper helpful. Right. But when it came to actual wood, forget it. So I take this one, and um, uh, the person who gave it to me also gave me a, um, um, a very large tooth blade. Uh -huh. I mean, we're talking, now the thing is, it's a six and a half inch saw, so it's full size saw. Right. And then they just, without realizing it, bought a full sized ripping blade. And I'm like, oh God, I mean, this nice. thing has teeth. I'm, I mean, the openings in the teeth are like half an inch right. in between each one. It's going to take a it's lot like, of torque to This to is going to take an through. enormous amount of torque to drive this thing. And so I'm like, okay. So I go out in the backyard. I pull out an old two by six. So I set it up and I'm like, all right, here we go. And it's like, ee, ee. and I'm like, I don't know about this. And it's like, ee. it ate through it like butter. Wow. I mean, there was nothing going on. I then pulled out a six by six and I set that up. And I just cut on all four sides. Wow. Right through a six by six. Okay. And it's like, okay. And then, of course, now I hadn't even put a charge on the battery. This is like straight out of the box. Okay. Right. And the battery dies on the last cut. And I'm like, okay, it came with another battery. Then I went and I looked and, and, and I'm like, okay, let me pop the battery back on. I pulled one of my other batteries off because I had, because I already bought the drill and the drill came with a charger and two batteries. Mm. And it's the same as I had on my weed eater. And so now I've got three batteries and two chargers again, ready to go on the cobalt. Well, they got me an extra battery. I pull it in, I put it on, and I'm like, what the heck? It's a different size. They have two hour and four hour batteries. Mm -hmm. So I now have, I, I had two four hour batteries before. Now I've got a quick charge two hour battery, okay, which I can just throw on there real quick to get me through while the other ones are all charging. And it's like, this is pretty slick planning. So um, if you're looking at battery-powered tools, uh, at this point, I cannot say enough good stuff. Because, I mean, I've, I've run my weed eater on one for a year yeah. now. And it, it runs about 45 minutes on a four-hour battery. You know, but that's how, that's how things work. Um, <laughs> And, but I'll tell you what, 45 minutes is enough on a weed eater to do a normal yard. Well, that's what it's designed for. Tell that for. to your electric vehicle if you want to drive it around cross, you know, cross country, you know? Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I don't use my electric vehicle to weed eat my yard either. So, oh, well, true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, but for the yard and everything, you know, that battery setup and everything that I had was absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't want to be weed eating more than 45 minutes, so it was a great excuse. I have a, I'm like, I'm done. I have a 40 watt, a 40 volt. Yeah, uh, forty volt um, weed eater. Wow! Right, and right. it's got the interchangeable ends, so I change. I can change the end and put on a, a edger. Saw blade? Edger, Ooh. or I can put a saw blade on. Oh, too. nice! But get this, I can change the end and put a tiller on it. Wow! <laughs> and I have the tiller feature, and I tilled out a whole garden in my yard. No thing. kidding. We're talking a, a regular just. Battery powered. I mean, forty volt. Well, forty volt oh, though. It, it takes a battery like this big. It like slaps it, chink. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, forty volts, and and it's crazy the torque these motors have. Yeah. And, these, and the power of they these. have gotten so good at this yeah. power conversion. And I just when, when, when I was running that thing, and it goes, and it's got those big, you know, cross cut teeth. Like he. And I mean, no listening. resistance at all on a two by six. Mine's, you know, eating it up, eating up the ground goes right through the, the yeah. sod. 
Um, you what know, brand Rocks, is that? That was a Ryobi. It's a Ryobi? Mm -hmm. um, one by uh, uh, Home Depot. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, if, if, if you love Craftsman, um, uh, Cobalt bought Craftsman. You know, that, that was one of the weirdest things when Craftsman went up for sale. Yeah. I, I was really dumbfounded that um, it was Lowe's that grabbed the brand. Yep, and, and, and not, put it under Cobalt. Not, yep. ho uh, not Home Depot. I was really surprised that that happens and I was like wow that was really interesting because yep. I wouldn't I wouldn't have expected that well the interesting thing is you know the, the, the hand tools from craftsmen have the same warranty that you have with cobalt yeah. so it's just it's brand merging yeah at that point and people who expect and I, I think they really wanted to make cobalt jump ahead uh -huh. philosophically and in in the marketing brain well okay in terms of satisfaction and so they're putting those two together now they may they may not because it could could it could be that they just take depending on brand recognition yeah they may just like merge everything into craftsman they may merge. yeah exactly uh, you know yeah they, however they already they're going had to do that beforehand yeah however they're going to do it um it, it, it's going to be an interesting play but right now i can't i can't say enough good stuff mm -hmm. about a three-year warranty you drive down to the store they hand you a new one and it's it's well engineered tools yeah um so that's that yeah. um so that's that was what we did for the i wanted to bring that one up because you guys tech and batteries are tech yeah batteries. and so oh, that and, is, and, and, and power tools are power tech. tools yeah i mean knowing which ones so yeah. i i was really really surprised by cobalt but you, you know a year ago the guy sold me on the weed eater saying just bring it back just bring it back. We replace it. It's not a All problem. All right, I'll, I'll take it back. Yeah, exactly. And so that was that. Um, so, however, now we're actually going to get into our regularly scheduled program. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Um, today, our first topic is actually some some pretty scary stuff. You know, yeah. we've seen all this stuff with uh, you know Boston Robotics and their robotic dog, and and like a few people have been like, that thing's really really wigging me out. <laughs> I'm totally not okay with this thing. Yeah, the look, the look and the way it marches around. It's yeah. And so, what do we uh, find out? Um, there's video footage out of China that they are using robots like that. I'm sure they're not Boston Robotics. They're probably Shanghai Robotics using the exact same technology. That they was, just bought one copy that cloned it. You know exactly, I mean, exactly. That's now what they, that's what they now usually they're do. available on Wish for nineteen dollars. <laughs> But um, this, this is what they usually do. This so. is what they do, yeah. <laughs> and so it looks just like a Boston Robotics, but it's being used with a loudspeaker on its back yeah. um, to broadcast. But you know darn well it's got cameras, mm -hmm. um, as do the aerial drones that they are using yeah. for the same purpose. Probably has tasers as well. Um, <laughs> um, where they're broadcasting, you know, stay indoors, you're not allowed outside. And do, do we have any of that video, Rob? Is, no, okay. Uh, um, you know, what, what, I would I would just die if all of a sudden you know they ha they have this thing starts barking and chasing people back into the house. <laughs> back in your house. Back in your house. <laughs> somebody's, um, somebody's over the loudspeaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so they are using drone technology to make sure people are not no, leaving their homes now. No, no. I, and that, that, yeah. Um, yeah, the one on the left. Is the one that is being used primarily for um, <laughs> surveillance of the city streets uh, with loudspeakers. Judgment, judgment Day, Terminator. It too. really yeah. is. I mean, it's like the HKs, you know, the the, the hunter killers. Yeah. Oh, um, and it's we're there. It's happening now. They're not killing yet, but they're hunting right now. Yeah. <laughs> They're hunting, hunting. And surveillance and hunting features. What is hunting? Yeah. Tracking down prey in order to do whatever it is you want to do with it, capture it, kill it, whatever it is. Or in this case, just identify just, it. Just remember, right now, it's um, a, a technology that requires remote, act, remote control, but then they're going to take away that person element at some point. And they're going to turn it to over to AI. Oh, oh, oh! And, hey, and you that, know what? You those know what people, that? those people are subject to internal biases oh, and microaggressions. And hey, that's favor, John's mom. Let's they will go get her. Favor some people over others, and so we have to have AI controlling it so that oh, it's, it's fair and, and yes. equitable. Except for the guys and, that programmed it. And no, that doesn't happen. No, never. No, never. that that can't possibly. They be don't program issue. bias into a, a computer code. No, ever, or an never. algorithm that you know does searches. No. It's impossible. No, they, it's just a computer. No. Um, so yeah, so that's what's happening in the world of drones. <laughs> wait, wait, it's a learning yeah. computer, and it only learns what it's taught. What it's taught. Oh well, there you have it. Um, what? 
God, uh, there was a story last week about a piece of, uh, about an AI that was asked a question. Oh, geez. Um, would, it, would it feel bad um, eliminating the human race if it determined oh, they yeah. actually, uh, yeah. I did. And, and, it, and, and it's like, no, because if that's the right thing to do, then that's what I'll do. <laughs> but <laughs> for who? Just the right thing to do for who? Yes, it would also but, kill yeah. yourself. Who? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is. It is a little spooky, yeah. you know. When it's like, well, of course I wouldn't have any remorse or any kind of anything. If it's the right choice, then you just do it. And it's like, John, oh, I don't wow. feel. <laughs> what are you doing, Dave? Um, <laughs> so, so there's that. Um, uh, now this is interesting. Yes. You put this one in. I, what I happened with this? This is, uh, Apple came out with their new uh, studio, or I believe it's the studio display is what they have yep. called that now. I, I'm, I'm yep. like the reminisce, the cinema display, yeah. but now it's called the studio display. Um, it's, it, but it's only on their newest monitors, right? Yeah, it's their, their newest one. Okay. Okay, all because right, believe right. it or not, it has a full functioning uh, iOS operating system in it. Right. The monitor. The monitor well, is basically a gigantic iMac, um, and it uh, has iOS running in it. So it's technically a giant iPhone with a big screen, you know, 27 inch screen. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's great. Okay, so what you're saying is Zoolander was wrong. Phones didn't go this way, they went this way. Yeah, they didn't. Uh, <laughs> you know, I bet you this screen is like so big and it has a logic board like this big in it. I mean, that's it. it that's got to be it. Um, but, anyways, uh, you know, it's a $1,500 or $1,600 device. Okay. Okay, it's not cheap. Now, now why, why would you buy this monitor instead of just a regular monitor? What does it do? Well, because it's, it's sexy, it integrates well with Apple, you know, it, it's beautiful so display. It's a, it, and basically, it has it's an a smart monitor. It's a smart monitor. For a Mac. For a Mac. Okay. Um, it has an eyesight camera, so if you take, a, you know, get a FaceTime call or anything on your Mac and you have the monitor hooked up, and you want to have the lid closed, you can take the call right through the um, eyesight camera that's on the uh, Mac Studio. Um, I believe it also supports wireless display too because it has iOS built into it. Um, the issue is uh, Apple pushed some updates to the iOS uh, uh, operating system and the screen crashed. So people were getting uh, um, error saying that the uh, iOS update had failed, um, try again later in an hour, and if it doesn't work, uh, please contact an uh, Apple Authorized Service Center uh, or return your display forward. Right, and I believe people tried plugging it into other Macs. Yeah. And, everything, and it's like, no, 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 the problem is inside your monitor. Yeah, I, I this, mean, this you're talking about This logic board they put in there now has the capacity to FUBAR as much as your computer does. Oh, yes. So now, now you, have, does, you yeah. have a, a, a specifically timed end-of-life monitor. <laughs> so you have... Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. You can no longer get updates on your monitor at this time. <laughs> you have to replace it in seven years. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that's pretty frustrating because, you know, you spent $1,600... You know, and you wanted the best of the best, and you receive something like this. And um, they're not obviously going to say what the problem is right now. Um, all I could uh, assume would be that because um, because it is running iOS, um, and it's running technically an iPhone um, logic board. Then, if okay. it's running iOS, because yeah. um, iPad OS would be you know iPad. right. Yeah. So if it's running iOS, it's probably using a logic board from like an iPhone. Probably has, um, you know, the A11, A12 processor or right. A13 processor on it. And if that's the case, you know, it could be um, somebody when they wrote the code for it just didn't, you know, yeah. put in the specifics right. specific for the um, um, cinema display. Because remember, the cinema mm -hmm. display, you know, the, the phones would be looking for a touchscreen. You right. know? And you know a lot of the phones, you know, if you change your touchscreen, they would, they would crash. Uh, it could be looking for other sensors that are not there. So it sounds to me like that issue with the uh, installation um, uh, is caused by programming error, and and it's probably in, it's probably inserting a phone firmware into the device uh, without full phone functionality, right. and it's it's crashing. And Apple's probably once it starts to install the firmware, it uh, you know it says nope, sorry, we can't go any further, and just crashes. 
Who so knows? Whatever it so, is. So, so here's my next question on that, which is, um, if it is in this kind of a sort of catastrophic failure mode, then are they going to be able to push through an update to this? Or is this going to have to be something that's going to require well, they, they probably, actual bring it into the, you know, the, the geek bar, or not the geek bar, but, you know, the genius, genius bar, bar. Yeah, I mean, and if, to get it, repaired. it depends on how it, how it fails. If it, if yeah. it starts to write to the, uh, the, the ROM, to the uh, uh, image, to the uh, processor, and whatever's failing on the inside, um, they may have to require it to come in to go ahead and flash it back to the original ROM and, you know, if they have to uh, bring back the update and, and rewrite it for, mm -hmm. for the studio displays, then just push a new update to it. Um, and again, it could be as simple as that. It could be a problem where some of the, you know, during the production time, they were using a particular chipset yeah. and they made, you know, 700,000 of them with this chip and then they moved over to a different chip and you know that was a better quality and then they finished creating them so from this serial number to this serial number is going to be the issue i also wonder if there's anything. anything going on with the kind or date of mac that you have it connected to it, it, that uh, might be causing I, some I of the issues as well no, i wouldn't i wouldn't say that would be the issue um it's it's going to be internal in the screen itself because the update is to the screen um, I, I wouldn't see that it would be uh, whatever okay. device you have connected. Well, yeah, that well, yeah, but once it's down, it's down because people did try to plug it into other Macs and it still didn't work. Right, right. So it's still like, nope, my, my, my I, I own this problem. Go away. Yeah, it's, um, it's just, it's just really disheartening, you know. Um, yeah, and to get uh, that kind of a bug, I mean, it's a catastrophic bug because the screen stops working. Yeah, you can't use it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah. So if, if you have a yeah. studio display and you're getting this error, I would just go ahead and uh, yeah, just, you know contact Apple now yeah. and get it get the situation resolved um, because they, there's probably something out there that um, they're not saying and um, you might want to get it resolved uh, as soon as possible. Right. Um, yeah. So that and way and the thing is, of course, you know, I mean, we're giving the story. It's based on a two-day-old news article. And so, therefore, Apple's probably already solved the problem. Yeah, they probably um, already and, have solved and it. And they know exactly what has to happen. So yeah, contact them. Another device. And honestly, some of you may never experience it because they'll probably push through an update that'll fix it before you even know you have the problem. You know, seeing how this has iOS, I wonder if you have to sign into your Apple ID on your, your <laughs> screen. <laughs> your screen. And it's locked. <laughs> ah. Ooh. Yeah. Uh. Um, yeah, well, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens with this story. In yeah, the that's going to be interesting. In the meantime... Um, there, I, I love it when people challenge paradigms. And when you look at a unicycle, it means one wheel, basically, okay? A one wheel bicycle. A bicycle is a two wheel bicycle. Tricycle is a, is a three wheel, you know. But what do you call something that has two wheels that's really one wheel that is actually no wheels? Uh, that rides exactly like a standard bicycle. That, that, that is That's the creepy, something. weird thing. And somebody went back and challenged the idea of how bicycles work. And they went ahead and they 3D modeled and designed this. As you can see, it is, one, it, it, it is built like a tank track. It is one set of tracks that run an infinite loop. Hence, it also has the infinity. You know, it's just it's the way it works. And so you look at this thing. So now your, your pedal actually drives both wheels simultaneously because it's driving one track. It's um, like four-wheel, two-wheel, single drive. That's exactly what I would have called it if I'd had a couple drinks first. <laughs> um, but now Adam and I, it's really funny. We both had the same objection to it, and that is... It's great as long as you're only going in a straight line. Right. But then we blew up the image. And what we were able to see was that the handlebars actually go down and they have double pivot points on them. Mm -hmm. So that assuming the track is flexible and it's able to lock in to the guides regardless of how they're pointed, it does appear that it will steer as well. Um, you can see there's, I, I can see one of the pivot points down low, okay? There, there's like a, a bar hinge in there. And so if that's actually the case, then this thing is 
This is a crazy new take on bicycles. You know, I didn't notice. Well, I didn't notice uh, brakes on that thing. Um, I'm sure they're built into the track. You see, up on the handle grips, they've got brakes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they're just they just build so into the that, Oh, okay. there turn they are, right at the very it. front. See them? Turn the wheels. They are right at the very front. You can see the brake pads. Mm. Okay, just like a standard bike. So this thing is, it's great. Now, for me, I don't know if I would have put front wheel brakes on Can you imagine having to change it. your tire? No. <laughs> Can you imagine getting a flat tire? Well, you know, if it's solid rubber, I guess, but eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to wear. It's I, gonna I don't wear. think it's solid rubber. Okay. I think it is um, interconnected links oh. of solid rubber. And so if you've got certain links that wear out, you probably replace it, or you just replace the whole track. Uh -huh. And you bring it in, they take it apart, they put the new tire on, and you're I probably good for 10,000 more miles on it. Yeah, but how about the, uh, um, the uh, uh, drag, uh, you know, pedaling it? What, what do you think that would feel like? Of the excess drag of the extra rubber on the ground? Well, it's, because it not the just that, but the, it, um, I, if you notice in the picture, it has a small chain driving a larger hub. Sure. And that, that larger hub is also um, driving both sides of the track. Right, which means it takes, it, 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 according to the physics, apparently, it takes less energy. It's more energy efficient, mm. okay, because you're pushing both wheels, not just and one. And I notice it looks like in the hub that's right there yep. um, would, could possibly be um, the ability to change, um, change gears. Yeah, exactly. Inside. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's a multi-gear function. Yeah. Or at least automatic, it will be. Automatic. But right now, um, it, it drives the whole track at once. Now, contrast this with that other design we saw that has the square. Have you seen that one? No, no. Oh, that one has a square gear at the pedal level. Now, there was a company back many, many years ago, Diamondback, that yes. made an oval gear. Yep. And their oval gear was to give you that, so f you only had a, a hard area like at the top of the gear, but when you were like, say if you were trying to climb a, a hill right. or a mountain, it gave you that little extra leverage. They're using a square gear for it now. And they're finding what? the square gear, first of all, the chain never comes off because <laughs> yeah. it's locked on the sides, mm -hmm. okay, that it's turning. Yeah. It's locked on at least two sides at all times. Never just like one edge where it can come off, so it never derails. But um, when it when you pivot up into the point, it gives you much more torque, and so it gives you I, I like 30, 40 percent more oomph per pedal. What about uh, with the, the square the gear? Front, front only the front gears are driving the square. Right, or? the front gear is the square. Yeah. Everything else will run normally yeah. because that's where you're pushing, and so right. it gives you uh, extra un, un, unlike the oval. Okay, which was only every other, you know, yeah, you or, or every half rotation. This is four times, so you don't notice it as much. But you get massive amounts of oomph out of it uh, because it it at the it changes gear ratios constantly on you. Ne ne next, next they're gonna have like a, a snowflake pattern, and then fi finally it's gonna. It's going to evolve back to a round spoke. Back to a circle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not a cheese. They're like, we'll add more, we'll have more torque, 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 torque. Oh, it's a circle again. Thought we... I, I heard something this weekend, speaking of, you know, evolving back. Um, apparently, all life forms on Earth eventually evolve into one of two forms. And one, I think, is a shark and the other is a crab. They are the optimum life forms. Hmm. And so there's, it's, it's, it's called like carcinogenesis. You know, when, you, when, when humans evolve enough, we're going to become, we're not going to become these beings of light or grays that are walking around with our little flowing limbs. We're just going to become crabs with oh. our eyes out at the end of feelers and, you, you know, just pincers and that's all we need. Ah, so right. that will be the, the end of that's human evolution. That's why psoriasis comes up all the time. Yes. Yes, you, you will actually evolve out of it pretty soon because crabs don't get psoriasis. Well, no, no, that's the beginning of our shell forming. Yeah. Ah, ah. that's it, that's it. Um, there you have it. Pass the gene, pass there the gene. There we go, pass it on. <laughs> All right. Um, this was an interesting story. Um, they did 
a lot of research and a lot of scientific studies that were not actually starting with any kind of biases or preconceived notions, but they wanted to look into near-death experiences and what people were going through. So they just did full analyses of the, of the brain as it was going through various processes involving death. And what they found is that, uh, I mean, you know, we've all heard the stories, the bright light at the end of the tunnel. My, right. Tunnel? Tunnel. My life flashes tunnel. before my eyes. Um, I, I leave my body. I have an out-of-body experience. These are all the things that people commonly report. And so what they did was they went in and they started tracking um, EEGs on coronary patients. And um, this is where it got wild. Because what they found was as your body was shutting down, and, and the cool thing about you know coronary patients, we aren't talking about heart attacks, we're talking about the natural process of your heart stopping as a result of an illness. Uh -huh. That's what a coronary actually is. Your heart stops. The cool thing is with the human body and a little bit of electricity, you can restart the heart. That's why we get so many more stories now. We're restarting more hearts. And so we're getting more and more of this information that's coming about. What they found is that as the brain is shutting down, it is, um, it is a jumping up a level of hyper-realism. It is experiencing an internal mechanism, an, an internal reality that is so real, it, it transcends reality itself. It becomes the most real experience you've ever had in your life. And it happens just as you're dying. Now we take the next part they found. And this is what's really weird and kind of scary, actually. It's the part that's like, yeesh. Oh, boy. Um, we all know if your brain goes without oxygen for two minutes, the cells start to die, right? Okay. Wrong. That's not actually what's happening which is why you get these people who have been underwater for 40 minutes and they come back and they're fine. Uh -huh. It's because that's not actually how the brain dies. It dies very slowly. Right. Very, very slowly. The cells will last for hours without the heart pumping blood. So you're getting this residual brain activity that is just coming off this heightened awareness and this, this sense of hyper-reality inside, you know, your mind. Uh -huh. And so you are entering this other reality at that moment in your mind. And it is perpetuated by the fact that, oh, he's dead, there's nothing there, we have no... It, no, you may not have the brain activity that you can measure with a normal EEG, but with an enhanced EEG, you can still see that the cells are still doing their thing. And you're still alive inside your brain, even after your body has stopped. And so that gives a, a whole new picture of these near-death experiences, or post-death experiences is really what they are. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean that there's nothing else after that phase? No. Does this explain this phase for everyone? The fascinating thing is, it's really good for you. They also looked at people who had traumatic deaths. They don't go through this. If you're having a traumatic death, your mind is doing other things or the whole system is shut down or upset right. or whatever. Okay, You don't have this kind of experience. You only have it if you're having basically a heart stoppage right. while you're calm. So that happens. But people who had the experience, as opposed to people who had the traumatic experience, people who had the traumatic experience, no change in worldview, life, anything after the fact. The people who go through this hyper-reality experience come back changed. They come back with massive differences in their personalities. They are calmer. They are more at peace. They are more loving. They are more everything you would think that a spiritual 
experience like this. Awakening? Awakening, exactly. They're reborn, okay, after going through this and given a second chance. And they've experienced now something that is unconditional. Right. A, a, a hyper-reality, unconditional situation. And so they are brought back with this awareness of there being more. And that is what impacts those people that have this experience. So it's actually good for you. Um, I hope they don't start opening clinics. That start. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. I know, and so were all of we you. We call okay? this the we Heart Stop Clinic. On. Yes, yes. This is the, the Be Reborn Clinic. Um, I'm going to go get B-R-E-B-O-R-N.com right now. Uh, <laughs> and it is it is a fascinating, wow, fascinating issue that they were able to pull Be out reborn. by doing, the, don't you dare. Uh, <laughs> Bet you I can get it faster. Uh, (laughs) Dirt bag. Uh, (laughs) So that is, um, oh well, so that's what's going out there in the medical field. Um, They were able to pull off this research. Yeah, and I saw saw another one that they they had an uh, EEG, is that right? Um, Hooked up to a gentleman um, as uh, as he was passing. He had a heart attack just as he passed. And he, they were already doing uh, brainwave right. scans on him at, during the time, and he passed away at that time. Right. And it was just like, you know, they had, they had the ability to go ahead and um, monitor right. that whole scenario as yep. it was happening. Um, you know, they still worked on him. They didn't just let him die. Well, of course. Yeah. You yeah. Know, <laughs> well, 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 let's let's take this time to go ahead and figure it out. You know, no. Right. Um, they just so They're happened trying. to have, yeah. you know, be in that position. Right. And uh, they were able to, you know, to see the experience and what was happening and right. measure brain waves. So. Um, yeah. And, and, and that's where they got this because the brain waves that they were finding are the ones that are connected to hyper reality, mm-hmm. to having a, a, a massive sort of not delusion. Okay, but no, this, this, comp- I, I mean, I, I've had one of these. Okay, they almost lost me. Um, I went to the dentist and I'm, you know, did my paperwork. I'm sitting in the waiting room reading a magazine when I'm sitting in the chair, I'm just sitting there reading, you know, and I hear, Anthony, what? Anthony, shouting at me, well, like over the loudspeakers or something. I'm like, what the? Anthony, come back. I'm like, what is going on? I'm sitting in the waiting room. Okay, and it's, it, I mean, I can see, this was back in the 80s. I can see, you know, those chrome chairs mm-hmm. with the black leather sling, the magazine I'm reading. It was a two-month-old issue of Time magazine. You know, I'm sitting there reading it. You know, the, the woman's sitting at the reception desk, and I'm sitting there, and it's like, I'm hearing, I'm like, what is, why is somebody shouting my name? You know, and the woman at the reception desk is like, like, like nothing's going on. I'm like, what is going on? And I look up at the ceiling to look for the speaker. And the ceiling is water. And it's like, and I'm looking up through, and like way on the other end, and yet right there is the face of the dentist. And he's frantic. And I'm like, what are you doing on this giant TV screen on the ceiling in your waiting room? Okay, I'm like, what is going on? And suddenly it goes, whoosh, and I'm laying in the dentist chair, and he's like, oh my God, I thought we lost you. We gave you too much nitrous. Oh. I, was, I, had, I, was, I am highly sensitive to nitrous oxide. And he didn't run the test that my previous dentist did to see where I hit my limit. Right. He put me on the standard dose, and it put me into a coma. Oh, boy. And... Having been there, dude, I can't tell you that this is not the same thing right now. I absolutely cannot tell you. There is no difference between this and that. Right. Other than he tried to pull me out of it. Mm -hmm. And had he not been shouting and caught my attention, I might have stayed. In that same waiting room all this time? Imagine that. (laughs) That would be... God's waiting room. Beetlejuice! Yeah. (laughs) I got your number. Uh, <laughs> I know. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, that was just, 
And, and wow. that's why I can still see it. I can still see the Time magazine. I can still see as if I was sitting in that same waiting room. Unbelievable. Now, I can remember that waiting room from the other side because that's where I sat most of the time. Mm -hmm. This time I was sitting on this side. Anthony does not go to that waiting room anymore, folks. No. No, I do not. No. Um, because, I mean, to me, that is God's waiting room. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, you, you, you hear it's St. Pete, but no. Um, you, you know, I mean, there's a reason we call it Newport Wrinkle. You know all those old uh, people down geez, in St. Pete? Yeah. yeah, this is where they come to visit their parents. Okay? <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that's... that's that's tying right in with this, but that's a personal experience that's that I really wanted to just get out there because there's nothing like it. Yeah. There's nothing like that hyper-reality sense that your mind just closes off and creates a world. And mine made it no further than the freaking waiting room of the dentist's office. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's that sleep paralysis. Yeah. Another one, you know, people wake up, they're, but their body's still asleep, and they wake up mentally. Wow. You know, and then they're, they feel like they're trapped in their body. Yeah, I, 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 I've never experienced that one. Nor do I think I want to. No, no, mention it. no. You know, it's like, you know, you move hand, you're not moving. Now, now, I do get that every now and then because I've slept on my arm wrong or something. <laughs> it's like, come on, move the damn fingers. No, 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 we're not. No, come you're on. not moving no, your head either. Man, please. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh. You open your eyes and you look around and you're like, what am I still here for? So, oh, gosh. So, um, so that is how your brain upgrades when your heart stops. Ah, that's how. <laughs> um, and that was a I really. I have a software update. Yeah, exactly, oh. which is our next topic. Um, yeah. What is going on with these new software updates? Well, uh, Apple's working on iOS 16 and WatchOS 9, and they're going to be giving us some, uh, um, there's supposed to be some major updates to the software, um, and we're going to be hearing about Is 16 going to allow Facebook to track people again? <laughs> no, we'll cut off the rest of the world next. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're going to be talking about this at the um, Software Developer Conference uh, for okay. Apple in June. Are there any hints on um, what might they, be in there they, for both of them separately? Because they it look looks very like they, they may be doing some major changes um, in the design of the of the software. Really? Um, that's going to you know because you mean we won't just get a new background pick? Oh, or, or we won't a, be a, able a new to, nature pick? No, no. We I think there's going to be some major changes in this. Um, there's going to be updates to the um, uh, tracking, health tracking feature, which, uh, by the way... Um, no, that's part of the watch, though. Both, both well, the yeah, phone, Well, yeah, they do integrate. Yeah, mm -hmm. do integrate. Um, I will say that their, their health um, integrations um, are very, very interesting of what it can monitor and keep track and of. And predict. And predict, yes. Yeah, that's know? the wild and, thing. Um, you know... And then they're going to uh, update, like, uh, you know, basically updates uh, when you, not updates, but when you get notifications, things like that. Um, trying to make the notifications uh, function a little better um, instead of, you know, either stacking them on top of another or uh, it'll be interesting how they try to fix some of that. I, I will say that my biggest annoyances is like, say I'm in the middle of, you know, looking up something on the web and I'm scrolling through and a notification pops up, and I accidentally hit that notification as I'm trying to be in another app, and next thing you know, it switches apps to whatever the notification. I mean, it's like, come on, you know, I was just doing something. You know, the phone yeah. should be smart enough to predict that, you know, this, this person is, you know, scrolling uh, or, you know, in the middle of doing something. Why show the notification now just because it came? You know what I mean? Well, yeah, well, you have it set that way. Well, um, that is a setting. You can turn right. off. You know the the active notification. So basically, but, yeah. what's going to happen is Apple's just going to go in there and retweak the thing annoyances that you don't like. Of course. And then turn off the switches and call it a new operating system. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we'll just turn this feature off. Look at the great update. <laughs> Look at the updates, everybody! Yeah, no, all what an awesome update! Yeah, now so auto turns everything it, off. That's yeah, all. And, and so um, that's. It, I think sometimes I think that's what they do. Um, but uh, there's going to be some redesigns. Um, there's also a possible new uh, iPad o, uh, OS. Do we have a name for 16? Do you know? Um, yeah, 16. 16.0. Okay. Point one. Well, well, this is iOS, okay? It's not Mac. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Mac is what gets all the groovy names. Yeah, Mac gets yeah. all the weird stuff. But yeah. they, they said that they're not going to be announcing um, the, any features of uh, mixed reality yet. 
um, but most likely the operating system will have the core integration in the background ready for it. Okay. Um, so mixed reality is going to be coming at some point. Now, is that their phrase for augmented reality? Is that uh, what they're yeah. calling it? Uh, it's, uh, okay. Yeah, because, you know, everybody's got, you know, everybody uses augmented reality and stuff like that, that term. In, yeah, you know, I, I actually, I, I, think, I think the phrase mixed reality has, has some interesting, in, interesting just definitional plays on it. Because when you say augmented, you're saying, oh, this, this is superior. Right. We are, we are making reality better. Uh, when you say mixed, you're putting them on equal footing. Right. And you're, which in many ways, for most people, they dismiss the idea of, yeah, you're not making it better, okay? Right. You know, uh, uh, because, look, I have hands but no arms, you know? Um, but when you say mixed, it suddenly puts them on an equal footing. Right. And, and I think people can mentally accept mm -hmm. that much more easily than an augment, you know, like a Borg implant. Um, but so that is... It's an interesting way to, to and it's refer gonna be in, to it. It's going to be interesting when uh, they are able to create the um, like a mixed reality glasses and things like that. Where yeah, I'm, I'm 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 kind of looking forward to that. I know that in my I, Oculus I right now, using the uh, the mixed reality is kind of cool. Now, one of the things that just happened, um, I got this really crappy dart game in my Oculus. And it's like, okay, I mean, it's really bad. It's like, I can't do anything but, like, sh drop the dart on the floor, you know? I um, mean, it's, it's, it's just, come on, you know, work yeah. on your algorithm, buddy. Uh, but here's the cool thing. When I turned it on, it asked me, hey, do you want to replace your joysticks with your hands? Mm -hmm. It's like, sure. It's like, okay, put down the joysticks and hold your hands up. Okay, okay, we got them. Boom. And now instead of having, you know, fun, it literally looks like hands yeah. in the program. The, the tracking and the tra yeah. tracking is getting very good. I'm, and, and, it's, and it is full, yeah, I mean, it's like almost instantaneous. And, you know, they're not using high, major high-definition cameras. No, it's black and white. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not good at all. No. But what I found most fascinating was the way that it allowed you to interact with the world. Yeah. Where you pinch, okay, or you open or your hand, you point your, you, you, you basically spider web sling, mm -hmm. okay, to go to a new place. If you want to um, get to the menu, you hold your hand up and the Oculus logo appears and then you close your finger on the Oculus logo and that opens the menu for you and then you can select on the menu there's and it's like there's a game um there's a game there's a uh, dance central game that's on the uh, oculus um, my wife likes the dance central game yes. like, from before and this kind of puts you into the game into the the, the, disco. the disco and stuff and it's it's hilarious and you you dance you know battling with somebody else and the funny thing is is you're in a club and you're standing there and you have to look to your right and reach a hand down and when you reach a hand down and squeeze the trigger you grab a cell phone. Right. And you bring the cell phone up, and then you take your other hand and you come over. And if you, because they ha allow you to use your hands yeah. and point, yeah. you have to make a pointing yeah. of your hand, and s you can swipe so it. So that is set to read hand, not joystick. Uh, it, well, it's, it's reading joystick. Okay, uh, joystick, it yeah. It is reading joystick, but right. your, your hand has to go into that maneuver yeah. in the joystick mm -hmm. in order for it to do it. Um, it tracks swiping. You yep. Swipe through the phone. Yep. Just like a regular cell phone. Same you thing. Dial. I mean, uh, with 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 the hands, instead of using the buttons to do it like you are yeah. on the joystick, you're like you're swiping up. You're pinching and moving up. And it's it, on on a screen. Isn't uh, it interesting how your mind, like even if you see something in, in virtual space and you go to reach for it, how your mind can literally almost feel it. It's just, it's like. You're reaching for it. You don't want to grab it too hard. You want to feel the exterior. You almost, yep. it's just like, you know, it's like you're pre-programmed to like understand it. And that was, um, you, you know, in, um, in the Star Wars game that I have, of course, you've got, you know, wrist controls. Right. Okay. So you can read different, you know, things. You can grab the back to fluid spray to heal yourself and spray it wherever you need it and then throw it away because it's empty. You know, or you can put it back on if there's still half left. 
uh, you pull out your gun from your hip, just like you're talking about. You got to yeah. grab, and I mean, it, it, it takes practice. You're going to get good at putting it back on exactly onto the the magnetic holster ring that it has. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all very physical. Yeah, and it can be. I I have mine hooked to like a three foot by three foot square in my office. I just stand up in my chair and I just play right there. Or I could go out to the living room and do a 10 foot by 10 foot square where I have a lot more ability to move around a room or, you know, see things, do things. You know, and it's just, or you can even set it so that you're sitting in a chair and it knows that you're chair bound. So you said, you said 10 foot by 10 foot, right? Yeah. And then you said three foot by three foot. There's a, there is a game on the Oculus. Yeah. If you get a chance, um, it's called um, uh, Space Pirates. Oh yeah. I've okay. heard of it. Now they turned on a feature called arena mode. Right. In arena mode, you can go as large as a tennis court. Yeah. And you can draw your space as a, in, a, in a tennis court. And, as um, long as you're indoors. As long as you're indoors because the sunlight yeah. block bleeds yeah, out the Yeah, the sunlight cameras. messes with the sun. Um, but sensor. this is such a game changer because it overlays a complete obstacle-driven virtual, you know, yep. you know, hunter, you know, type. Wow. feature where you can play with other people and you know run around obstacles hide and shoot and shoot enemies and stuff like that and it's just like and you got this huge it's a holodeck holodeck it is exactly. a holodeck and that is um that is just incredible that is it's just you incredible. know that would be such a crappy thing to discover that the holodeck on the enterprise is actually because they're all wearing contacts <laughs> <laughs> I know. mean, to hell with glasses. What happens when we come out with contacts? That can do it, yeah. And what if they fry and you, and you burn your retina? Well, it's okay. You'll just get a new one. <laughs> you just get a new um, Oh. But imagine, though, you know, we keep thinking of glasses. As far as I'm concerned, the, um, uh, the contact lens would be the best way to do it. Yeah. You know, that would be, because if you can actually program in what you're seeing, imagine the mixed reality through the contact lens. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, my, um, my contact lens is overheating. I don't understand what's going on. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> my eye is burning. <laughs> it burns because you're wicked. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just, just imagine if, if this is the technology, <laughs> if this is the technology we have today, yeah. okay? And, and, and Where is it going to be in 10 years? Oh, exactly. Oh, my God. You know, and computers are changing. Um, you know, yeah. they're, they're getting, um, just look at the uh, quantum computers that they're, they're working with and stuff. Yeah, um, that you know they're they're getting faster and faster and faster. I know. I, mean, I mean, even just seeing how fast this thing, you know, this two hundred dollar item can respond to my hand. Right. That's that's insane. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? Truthfully, it's it's yeah. it's crappy stuff inside. When you when yeah. you when you when you put it together, it's technically just yeah. a cell phone with a, a a number of cameras hooked up to it. Is is all this thing is? Wow. And yet they can they can manipulate it. To, uh, to do what you see today, and it's, it's phenomenal. Just imagine when that, that technology gets small enough, and I think that's what Apple's waiting for. Yeah. They're waiting, th they have the idea, they have the know-how, they have the capability, they have, mm -hmm. they have the products out there, they have enough people willing to purchase. Yep. They have to just wait for the technology to get good enough to do what they want it to do. You know, and that's why, like, you know, you don't see Apple um, all of a sudden push out a 5G modem into a phone. Right. It's not that it's not available. Look at Samsung and everybody else. Mm -hmm. But it's not up to par to where they want it to be, you know. Yep. So that's, that's the difference. You know, when people sit mm -hmm. there and complain, oh, well, I've already, I've already been doing this since, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, it's not the fact that you, you, you're, you're doing it. Apple needs it to be able to integrate with their stuff. It needs to be yep. able to communicate with See, its hardware. And this, this brings me to our last topic, that ability to integrate reliably. Because mm -hmm. I heard this weekend, I listened to a lot of podcasts and programs and everything on marketing and online marketing you yeah. know, in particular. And one of the phrases that is now being dropped in the marketing world, the high-end digital marketing world, is that Facebook is becoming buggy. Yes. Buggy? What do you mean buggy? And so you're talking to these guys, and they're like, I, I'm no longer a content creator and marketer. I am now having to become a Facebook compliance officer to figure out what it is they've shut my channel down for this time. 
These are not political things. These are not, you know, conspiracy theories. These are people out there doing marketing for their businesses and they're finding them being shut down because somehow, because they posted on too many Facebook groups or they posted on, and so the algorithm is becoming so complicated that it's now can, being considered buggy mm -hmm. and they're starting to pull their ad dollars. And they're going, of all places, to TikTok because TikTok runs a completely different kind of algorithm. I got some insight into the TikTok algorithm and the way it runs, and this is brilliant. It is designed to augment viral content. And what it does is, unlike Facebook, where it looks at your target audience and then it looks at you know, how many people it can show it to and then what you're paying for and what the demographics are and what the yada, yada, yada and all this stuff and whether they like your message or whether it fits this niche or that niche or, oh, I'm sorry, there's too much. Remember when it's like, if more than 25% of your image has text, you can't run an ad with yeah. it, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Okay, it, it's gotten 10 times worse. Even though they lifted that restriction, they put 10 more in its place. And with TikTok though, what they've done is they say, okay, here's what happens. We take your content and we look at who you are on your channel and we show it to a bunch of other people like you for an hour. If they engage with it, if they pause the video, if they replay the video, if they, you know, whatever it is they do, if they augment it or, or, or engage with it in any way, then that's a point in your video's favor and we'll show it to more people at the end of the hour. That is the TikTok algorithm. They don't care what's in it. Right. They care about how people respond to it. So what a refreshing difference. And the nice thing is TikTok's about where Facebook was eight years ago in terms of getting in. Right. So there's a lot of opportunity there. I wanted to drop that idea as we are now approaching the end, the end. of another episode of Tech Shamans or something like that. So, hey, yeah, if you want to um, get any questions, any comments or anything, you can write to us at techshamans at webeamtv.com. And we will be looking forward to seeing you next Monday right here. Same tech time, same tech channel. Same tech no, 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 no. Technical and stuff, boy, so yeah. Come on, come on and turn it on. Turn it to the tension. Come on, come on and turn it on. Turn it to the tension. Come on, come on and turn it on. Turn it to the tension. Come on, come on and turn it on. Turn it to the tension. Cool.